The kingdom which is within to get a more well defined understanding of self on this journey of self realization. The journey of self realization is the journey into the different levels of the kingdom. All right, going beyond this outer veil of the lower heavens. All right, all right, let's eat. We're going to start in the first light super scroll. Start a little precept about the first light super scroll. Thou shall be the light. Verse 27. Ultimately, we become the offspring, the children as experimental sons and daughters of the divine light. Experimental being the key word because the lower heavens is the experimental realm. If you've seen the last lesson on the local logos, all right, it explained that, all right, that the Benai Elohim are governing different regions of the experimental realms of the lower heavens. Ultimately, we become the offspring, the children, as experimental sons and daughters of the divine light, because this is an experiment, you do not have to partake. All right, we have a choice, we don't have to partake. That's why it's an experiment, to see those that choose to participate in the program manifesting the sustaining power with our greater celestial birthright all right to go back to the celestial realm is our birthright that's why this first superscript is called that should be the light to understand that you are a child of the light, you understand the land of your inheritance is not America, Africa, Australia, or any of the physical lands because studying words, the word land means domain or realm, all right? So the land of our inheritance is our celestial birthright all right it's not the physical land it's the domain which is why brother jesus taught us the kingdom is within all right this makes us direct participants in experimental realms of unfoldment through which we ultimately attain the nature of divine sonship and divine daughterhood evolving into our own aspects of the creative sustaining Godhead as divine fathers and divine mothers in experimental universes in the many mansion worlds. All right, so again, 
We become the offspring as experimental sons and daughters of the divine light manifesting the, the sustaining power with our greater celestial birthright. That's why we have to come down the path of self-realization which takes us to the kingdom which is within. This makes us direct participants in experimental realms of unfoldment through which we ultimately attain the nature of divine sonship and divine daughterhood evolving into our own aspects of the creative sustaining Godhead meaning oneness with the Godhead I and the Father am one that's what we are to evolve into as children of the light Sustain evolving into our own aspects of the creative sustaining Godhead as divine fathers and divine mothers in experimental universes alright because that's what we are to become you are not to just to stay a child of the flesh. All right? Let's go to the keys. Let's get a precept. Let's go to key 318. Page 537. Verse 54. In general, there are three categories of souls in the lower worlds. And remember, the word soul means embodied spirits. Meaning you're incarnated. This not including the disincarnated beings. Alright, so we're just not talking about the benign Elohim and all of those beings. There are three categories of souls in the lower worlds. New souls arising out of frequency modulated codes radiated into the primeval sea of creation which have never been in the light. All right, so this is the first category. I mean, these are the souls like, if you've seen the movie Soul with the eternal mothers preparing the new souls for their time of probation in the flesh, that's what it's speaking on, all right? Which in the sealed portion, it talk about the eternal mothers, all right? Giving birth to new souls, just like it showed on the movie Soul. So when new sun universes, such as like when this earth was created, the, this is one category of the souls that was sent down here into the lower heavens, the new souls, all right? When this new experimental realm was created, all right? Secondly, we got souls synthesized out of the functions of light and darkness. All right, so this include those going through the cycle of death, birth, and rebirth, samsara's will. Those that cannot escape the will of rebirth because they never come to knowledge of self. All right? And if you study the keys, it teaches you that if you don't get it before this realm is transformed, then you get it in the next experimental realm that you will be sent to to start the journey again. All right? And the same thing with those on the other side of the veil that get sent down into the flesh. All right? Because they can either move upwards or go downwards also. All right? But that's why I say synthesize out of the functions of light and darkness. All right? So those are two categories of souls down here. And thirdly, you got the Eternals. The souls of the firstborn of Yahweh who descend into the outer experimental regions of space as integrated life beacons of immortality. The latter are used according to Metatron, speaking on the third one, the Eternals, the firstborn souls are used according to Metatron to bring the image of the Father for the upgrading of intelligence. All right? That's why the first superscript was called Thou Shall Be the Light. All right? First, you have to understand your essence as the light. Then, you can go to the second script, which is Thou Shall Be the Image. All right? But those are the three categories of soul. We got the new spirits, 
we got the ones that's continually in reincarnation because they don't want to progress. And then you got the eternal set in to elevate the image codes back that want to go farther. Now let's go to the sixth superscript. That should be the word, the living logos. All right, so I'm gonna start at verse 95. The solution to the conflicts is one of choice. That is, in our reality, conscious choices are critical for the evolution of life in this realm of duality. For this reason, the law and the word needed to be consciously known, needed to be consciously known in the local universe. Henceforth, the law of the Ten Commandments was revealed to Moses first as a light code. The Ten Commandments was revealed to Moses first as a light code. Let's get a precept. All right. So this is going off of the lesson we did last week on the DNA and the Ten Commandments. All right. Let's go back to the keys. Page 563. Verse 2. The Ten Commandments that Moses received are the true living energy codes. The Ten Commandments that Moshe received are the true living energy codes of the tree of life transposed from the light projections of the I am that I am into the written word of wisdom. However, understand that they are not to be limited to that which has appeared in stone, for they are the light energies structuring and restructuring stone. Pause. So when it says the first stone, when it says understand that they are not to be limited to that which has appeared in stone, the first time it says stone right here is speaking on the stone tablets, all right? The Ten Commandments, the living energy codes, are not to be limited to that which has appeared in stone. For they are the light energies structuring and restructuring stone. All right, let's get a precept and see what this stone is. We're going to go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Chapter 11. All right, because this is speaking about the stone of your heart. That's why it says structuring and restructuring. All right. Ezekiel chapter 11, starting at verse 19. And I will give them one heart. Speaking on Zion. The remnant that returns. I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart. The heart of stone. The hard heart. The carnal worldly heart. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. And will give them a heart of flesh. That they may walk in my statues and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations. Meaning those whose heart is hard because it's after the things of the world. I will recompense their way upon their own heads said the Lord God alright and that's also in Ezekiel chapter 36 26 through 38 alright so it's speaking about 
when it said right here, back to the superscript, the Ten Commandments as the living energy codes, they are the light energies structuring and restructuring stone, aka that hard heart into a softened heart given to man the many wavelengths of light the many the myriad wavelengths of light the myriad levels of consciousness so that he can penetrate all form verse 5 for their structure encompasses the physics of creation evolving from singular rel relativity to collective relativity for their structure encompass the physics of creation evolving from singular relativity to collective relativity and shows the infinite meaning of the divine name as the vital network necessary to evolve the many worlds of the sun universes. These ten light emanations, these ten light energy codes, these living energy codes, the Ten Commandments, the Ten Superscripts, these ten light emanations are the living link between the I Am of the Father's eternal mind and the I Am vehicle of life within every son and daughter who bears the image of the Adam Cad mind, speaking on the children of light, and is sealed unto eternal life through the spirit of the Shekinah, which is the presence of the Most High. Alright, let's go back to the sixth super scroll. Verse 96 again. Nah, starting at 97. However, due to the corruption in our matter and energy realms, a purified evolutionary commandment that would upgrade life and light into its greater inheritance was not sustainable. All right, speaking on the time it was given to Moses. Thus, in order to allow the powers of the law and word to be realized, a second set of Ten Commandments was given of thou shall not, thou shall not steal, thou shall not kill, thou shall not covet, etc., etc., to help in humanity's choices. All right, so this was the process of upgrading. You had to first learn to govern your flesh before you can learn to govern your thoughts and your spirit, man. Therefore, the law brought forth by Moses through the Ten Commandments was to show not only the perfection of life, but to initiate, but to initiate the bringing forth of the consciousness slash physical change within humanity ultimately to manifest its completion by the divine word the living law originates from the living word the living law originates from the living word as that which maintains the necessary agreements between the inner blueprint of the tree of life, which is the Shekinah universe, and the material components of the universe. It is fundamental to understand that the law and the word as gospel are not simply the local law of nature, but the governance of life from the farthest reaches of universal space, hyperspace, and interdimensional space. Yet it reaches down to the dynamics of even the smallest 
microbial balance and our organic nature. The word as logos, the divine thought is ongoing. All right, because like we read, when we read about the definition of the Torah or it's always more scriptures to take us higher and higher and to initiate us in the farther levels of life. Meaning we gain more of the word, becoming more of the living logos, gaining more divine thought and understanding and comprehension. The word as logos is ongoing, but its initial manifestation unfolds and sustains the law. The Logos, the Word, as divine law, allows for the continuation of the patterns of universal creation. And ultimately, the divine law is understood as a manifestation of the perfect Word, establishing the original blueprint also from the Shekinah and El Shaddai for all nature and life frequencies, spectrums, as well as the mathematical codings for all sequential nature within new realms being established. All right, so let's get a precept about what we just read right here about the original blueprint from the Shekinah and El Shaddai for all nature and the light frequencies and spectrums. All right, let's go to back to the first superscript. Verse 67. Ultimately, the Logos co-designs the biophysical laws of evolution with the power of Metatron. Because remember, Metatron through Enoch gives the higher sciences. All right? The sciences of the keys and the superscripts came from Metatron. All right? And those are to help unfold the living light and the living logos through the word increasing our consciousness, initiating us in the higher levels of light. Ultimately, the Logos co-designs the biophysical laws of evolution with the power of Metatron in association with the Shekinah creative power. All right, and the Shekinah is the presence. All right, so that creative power is speaking about the Holy Spirit, but also the power of the Shekinah universe within us. Stick with the pink. In our reality, this is the divine tetrahedron of life behind all life and our consciousness zone. All right, let's get another precept. Let's go to the third super scroll. All right, let's go to the third super scroll called Thou Shall Be the Name. First one, thou should be the light. Second one, thou should be the image. Third one, thou should be the name. Starting at verse 47. Metatron, also known as El Shaddai, is also known as the Almighty by the sages. Metatron is the co-evolving aspect of the divine and has no singular manifestation as he manifests into myriad creations and provides the empowerment for not only life forms, but the realms of life themselves. Providing the mathematics, the physics, and the unifying metasciences, revealing the inner codes of life within every reality, within and without, meaning internally and externally, inside and outside of the realms of creation. 
All right, Metatron is the one that reveals the working of the Shekinah universe. Verse 53, nothing is really based on happenstance, but on conscious choices. Life unfolds first from the divine name, Yadhe Vadhe, associated with the Atsik Yom, the Ancient of Days. Then the patterns of thoughts, the patterns of thoughts and frequency vibrations, aka alignments, from the sacred names flow through the power of Elohim, who in conjunction with Metatron, El Shaddai, and the Shekinah, the mothering energy, carry forth their collective powers to establish various sun universes, the experimental realms. So streams of consciousness associated with formation and transformation come through Metatron, who initiates the creative life forces by initiating them to the higher sciences. On the highest levels of our sun universe, they become manifest as the Bana Elohim. All right, like we've read about in the last lesson. You got righteous Bana Elohim, and you got those jokers that want to be like the unrighteous down here in the flesh. All right? On the highest levels of our sun universe, they become manifest as the Bana Elohim, who are co-designers. All right, and one of the key words you're going to keep noticing is co-designers. All right, in the beginning, they speak on us, the sons and daughters being co-designers. We just read about Metatron being a co-designer. Now we're reading on the Bana Elohim being co-designers because all the creation is linked. It's a oneness running through all of creation. That's why we just read in Ezekiel, he said, I will place one heart within them because you got to work in oneness. That's why everybody that's outside of oneness, that got that selfish, egotistical, all about me mindset, they are out of alignment with the celestial law because every level goes hand in hand. Every being goes hand in hand. On the highest levels of our sun universe, they become manifest as the Bana Elohim, who are co-designers of the various sun universes, and who have been given their positions by the power of Yah. Thus, Metatron, alongside the Elohim in the Shekinah, provides all the original life codes for creation. The codes of which are then passed on to the Bana Elohim for expansion into various sun universes. As the divine unfoldment takes place, the heavens, the different levels of the heavens, come into manifestation with the sub-creations of the host, the many beings, on the different levels of the heavens. All the patterns of life in our sun universe are established from multidimensional realms simultaneously and are not generated exclusively in a third slash fourth dimensional form. That's why when you learn to connect back to the spirit, you can have more control and authority, which is the dominion that it say we had in the beginning of Genesis when it say man and woman was created to have dominion. Your dominion comes through the spirit by understanding the way this whole thing is set up. That's why you gotta go back to the image that we was created in in the beginning. And that's what the 10 commandments or the superscripts take us through. From the light, to the image, to the name, and going higher and higher. So right now, we in the sixth one. Thou should be the living logos, or the divine thoughts. Alright? So now, back to the sixth superscript. Verse 104. Thus, in addition to initiating a program 
of the Brahma numerical slash mathematical codes also written within the higher law are the codings also written within the higher law are the codings necessary to restore and perfectly align through the logos the consciousness in the world of action or the realm of Messiah, which is the lower le the lowest level of the heavens. All right, and that's where Yahshua as the logo and all of the other ones that were sent to elevate the consciousness levels. That was what they were sent to do to realign us back with the higher law. All right, which means we had to expand our consciousness to be able to do that. All right, that's why those that believe that they don't have to read higher teachings, they in error. And that go back to the three different souls that's down here in the lower heavens that we read about in the beginning. If you don't want to go farther, that's fine. If that's cool. If the land of your inheritance is America, Africa, or any of these continents, these physical lands, you still got a earthbound consciousness because you're still seeking things of the earth. You're not seeking your celestial birthright. So therefore, in your next incarnation, the only thing, the blessing that you're going to receive is earthbound because that's where your consciousness is at. But it's, it's no harm, no foul. There's nothing wrong with that because you got to grow from that. All right? That's why it's no problem. Everybody coming back in some way or form is just you either crossing over to the other side, but life is an ongoing process. But if you want to come back to the earth and be in a time of your blessing like the Old Testament when the Israelites was in control of the world, that's what your heart is set on, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right, that's your right. If that's what you want, that's cool. All right. But eventually, as you keep going and stay in the world, you're going to realize that it's higher and higher levels, and then you'll go back to chasing your celestial birthright. All right. Thus, in addition to initiating a program of the primal numerical mathematical codes, also written within the higher law, are the codings necessary to restore and perfectly align through the logos, the consciousness in action. The law thus establishes the parameters to renew the interaction of light. The law thus establishes the parameters to renew the interaction of light, image, Name, kingdom, and family. All right? Not the physical fleshly family. Because everybody in your fleshly family is not your true celestial family. That's why we all spread out in the gathering is through the four corners. Corners. The law thus establishes the parameters to renew the interaction of light, image, name, kingdom, and family for the connection of life back into greater divine existence. They get a precept out the keys. All right? So don't look down on reincarnation because it's cool. Some people that's transitioning now that understood the word and was loyal to the word, they're gonna get incarnated back as some of those spiritual seeds that's allowed to come back into the earth, all right, during the transitioning phase, all right? So even if you don't understand or grasp all this right now, that's cool. Keep going to get what you can get and you might just get incarnated back after the system then fell and you will be incarnated into a world without the wicked to where you can just focus on your growth because like it said in the keys 
that Elohim and the Lord is alike are coming here to set up academies alike. All right. Uh, let's go to the keys, page 457. Starting at verse 26. The recorder cell provides the information for pattern formation in the composition of life. Verse 13. As the seed forms approach the area where they are to be seeded, they are guided by the recorder cell, which is the governing mechanism in the formation of each world. All right, so the recorder cell is a memory tank. Let's get the definition, all right? And this is where the term Akashic Records come from. Recorder cell. The system for storing thought forms by higher thinkers, because only higher thinkers are able to access this system, which is the recorder cell. All right, the recorder cell helps unfold life, but also is deeper levels of it that higher thinkers can tap into. The recorder cell is the system for storing thought forms by higher thinkers, a hierarchy of knowledge through this system of elements powers matrices etc thoughts can be sufficiently combined in the materialization of energy thoughts can be sufficiently combined in the materialization meaning to bring it forth into this realm the materialization of energy, which thoughts are energy, allowing for orderly guidance of the thought forms in the construction of reality. All right, so back to verse 26 on page 457. This information from the recorder cells is then distributed by what the higher evolution Cause a Deca Delta Manifold. This Deca Delta Manifold is a form of energy flow established by a heat or light envelope that was produced by the image patterns of the throne through 10 light superscripts. All right, it was produced by the, by the patterns of the throne, meaning it came from the Elohim through the 10 light superscripts. These superscripts provide the Deca Delta Manifold with the proper topology, or we're gonna switch it up and say the proper technology which comes through consciousness, all right? These superscripts provide the Deca Delta Manifold with the proper topology so that the envelope created can process or unfold additional programs sent out from the throne. All right, and the Deca Delta Manifold is tied to the to the um, the Deca Delta system that we read about, which we know is tied to the activity of the brain. All right, that's all part of the Deca Delta system. The mind's eye. The crystal seed is part of that Deca Delta system. The Eye of Haru that we read about, which the beings unlock so that we can receive deeper levels of insight and activate our mind's eye. That's all a part of that Deca Delta manifold, but it's level two. 29, therefore, the Deca Delta manifold oversees all recorder cell activities in all intra-galactic activities directly associated with the galaxy. Metatron explained to me that the divine template orient orientating physical events within the structure of our galaxy operates through a delta 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 configuration, which is the central network controlling all input operations. All right, all input operations come from on high, is all that it's saying. All right, the 
Decker Delta configuration, which is the central network controlling all input operations and grad gradations of power, gradations of power necessary to sustain our galaxy. The Decker Delta manifold means that there are 10 space-time singularities of light interconnected with a pyramidal core memory, it's the recorder cell, storing the event functions operating within all dimensions of a galaxy. And remember, dimensions is based on consciousness, like it teaches us in the superscript. For example, the Decker Delta manifold is involved with the self-correcting regulations of recorder cells filter mechanisms of identification going from recorder program to recorder program, meaning elevating from one level to the next. Three, registering reinforcement between programs. And four, time controlling mechanisms. Or time release mechanisms, so to say. The creation of the Decker Delta Manifold is the formation of the central point which houses all possible evolutionary systems designed by the Creator Elohim for one galactic network. Through the Decker Delta Manifold, it is possible to evolve the various branches of star populations working with hands on a galactic clock set in motion. All right, through the Decker Delta Manifold. All right, because the Decker Delta is not only tied to us. All right, because remember, everything in creation is tied together. And being that it comes from the Elohim, it also is tied to the Benai Elohim. All right, through the Decker Delta Manifold, it is possible to evolve the various branches of star populations working like hands on a galactic clock set in motion. Now let's go back to verse one and two. All right, I pause. Let's, let's, let's hit verse eight right quick to show that, we didn't show this many times, but the Decker Delta system, the manifold, this is the way that the entities can speak to us in the flesh, but they're also bound together also. All right, verse 8 says, Through this divine word, the Elohim creators connect the perceptual apparatus radius of the brain, which is the part of the Decker Delta system, and give it a memory. The recorder cell, which contains the directions but the universal language processes. The language process controls pattern formation or pattern growth, namely where we are within the greater memory. All right, now let's go to verse one. Understand, O man of the earth, that you are extended to the worlds of light through a divine network of language. Now, you must decode. You must decode. You must decode this language operating within you and understand how you sprang from primal codes emanating from the templates of the heavens. You have to understand your nature how you was created. All right. Page 460, verse 55. The superscripts are the activity of the divine mind coding the primary diagrammatic teachings into the Decker Delta Manifold. They are placed there by the divine mind so that all hypersynchronized creations within the galaxy have a divine Decker Delta model to follow. 
which corresponds to each successive state of creation. Therefore, divine creation begins not with the galactic Deca Delta model, but from the divine names, which not only unfold programs of Elohistic creative power, but emanate ten light superscripts, which are composed of trinitized Deca Delta patterns, bringing forth the strength, meaning the power and beauty or radiance of Yahweh. This allows each Deca Delta manifold to represent the almighty power of the Father and the supreme ordering of creation on every level, on every level of being unfolded from the Deca Delta system. All right, back to the sixth super scroll, verse 105. In this way, the sixth light picture super scroll, as the living word, is also able to continually program local matter, as well as local non matter reality spectrums by means of the logos. All right, because I, as our consciousness increase, we learn, we alter the reality spectrum, which ties to our consciousness time zone by means of the logos, which is the divine thoughts. All right, as our thoughts alter our consciousness, we elevate beyond. Like we've seen in the last lesson, the local logos into a new consciousness time zone. All right. And as we continue to increase, we move farther up the ladder. All right. In this way, the six light picture superscript as the living word is also able to continually program local matter, meaning program us in the flesh, as well as local non-matter reality spectrums by means of the logos. The purpose of this process is to create and establish a positive light frequency band that can recombine through particular vibrational color patterns of divine thought to provide a higher purity of love and wisdom, creating specific activities that will stabilize the consciousness thought forms so they can align and coordinate with the divine light of the Most High. All right, because remember, like we read in Ezekiel, Zion is a people of one heart. All right, so you have to align through your consciousness. All right, and that's what all of these superscripts and the keys do. It put us to where we no longer following the precepts and commandments of men. And I think this and I think that, or I believe this and I believe that. Nah. The keys and the superscripts is telling you what it is. You, you, you don't have to guess and be like, well, I don't believe this and I don't believe that. Or I think this and I think, no, nah, it's, it's telling us. It's aligning us. Because these teachings is sent from Metatron through Enoch, described, to encode our consciousness so that we be on one accord. All right? And like it said right here, that will stabilize the consciousness thought forms so they can align and coordinate with the divine light of the Most High. The law of the living light organizes atomic structures which are made up of vibrational atomic frequencies of life connected with color frequencies, mainly beyond the visible spectrum. Oh, no. 
as well as superluminal forms of life and consciousness that work to reconnect our image with the Adam Cab man. All right? As well as superluminal forms of life, speaking on the higher evolution, that work to reconnect our image, because we are, that's, and that's part of the oneness. All right? The same way the priesthood of Melchizedek is sent to elevate those from the priesthood of Aaron to move them up is entities that sent the poor, their brothers and sisters that's trying to cross that threshold by elevating their consciousness to help recode us and put us back in our image with the Adam Cadman. The very structure of creation is to show that the soul inhabits a greater unfoldment of life and is not to become more and more entrapped into this material realm because that's bondage. But is to see itself within the larger cosmos as the soul aligns with this over self, its divine double, and ultimately is Christed over itself. All right. So hopefully, I know this was a lot of science. And it going to stretch your mind Because when I put the lesson together it made my head hurt a little bit <laughs> Alright So it stretched them thoughts It stretched my mind I like when I read something that make my head I, I had to sit down and think That means it's stretching Them muscles up there in their mind So we can process things a little more And the whole thing The ones that just want to listen That ain't ordering the books that you just listening, it's gonna be hard for you to really process as we keep going farther and farther. And that's what I re that that what I realize as we keep going farther in these superscripts and the keys. The ones that don't got and not trying to get the superscripts and the keys, we are gonna start to get disconnected because it's gonna take a level of study on your own to process this information. You ain't gonna be able to receive it all just from listening to the lessons. But it's just a little something, something to eat on so we can keep growing and flowing, moving and grooving to the next level. All right? Peace.